us on this uh, breaking news night. Thank you, Don, J Donald Trump Jr. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. All right, now let's bring All in right. legal spokeswoman for Donald Trump, Alina Haba. Alina, really good having you on. Thank you for uh, rushing to a camera on this momentous day, $365 million. It's insane. Um, your reaction? Uh, I, I, it's a, that's a loaded question, Eric. I mean, my reaction is that this is more of the same. We've seen it. It's coming from the top. And when I say the top, I don't mean Miss James. I think that this is uh, complete election interference at, at its finest. We've seen how many times do I have to be here and say the same thing? It, you know, he's the leading candidate for the Republican Party. He is the leading candidate for president period. And that is why we are doing this. We are sitting here getting um, disgorged of profits for doing absolutely nothing wrong. His statements of financial conditions were undervalued. We've got a judge saying mar lago was worth $18 million. And today we have a court order that says that this judge found Michael Cohen credible. It's incredible. What else is there to say? I, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that this, this whole case relied on Michael Cohen's testimony, a guy who went to jail for, for lying to the court. Alina, New York law, I'm just a lowly guy here. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I understand New York law may say that what the judge was supposed to do is provide damages and restitution. With a victimless crime, what damages and restitution needs to happen and why? The damages and restitution should go to Donald Trump. President Trump has been in three years of fights with Miss James and her team, and he didn't do anything wrong. What has happened is that we have somebody who ran for office on getting Trump before she even knew anything about the Trump organization, never was in office before, walked in, ran on it, held, we've seen the video footage before a million times, and Miss James made her commitment to her campaign. That's what we saw. What she said, promises made, promises kept. You know, this is a woman who on Valentine's Day said, you know, roses are red, violets are blue, uh, no one is above the law. I mean, it, it, it's not normal behavior for an attorney general. It's just not. Um, it's a serious office, and unfortunately, we've seen the corruption run deep, and these people are politically motivated. If there's any question, just look at the White House logs that show that she visited the White House before filing the complaint. That says it all. You know, incredible that she said, I'm going to get Trump before she even knew any of the facts of the case, before she was even attorney general. You know, and Goran, this, we, we played this before, but it, it's worth uh, really refreshing people's memory of the, who this guy is. This is nine years ago, folks, when he said this. Listen. Juries get it wrong a lot. <laughs> That's my own opinion, but I've had situations where like, oh my, my heaven's sake, how could they have thought that? Well, I have, a, um, I have a tool that I can deal with that. It's called jury notwithstanding the verdict, judgment notwithstanding the verdict. I can say there is no possible way that a reasonable jury would have reached that conclusion. I'm, I'm following law, I'm, I'm an impartial, referee, but it's hard to factor out my own emotions. What do you, isn't this grounds for appeal? That, isn't that soundbite exactly what you should present to the court for appeal? I think we have more than that, quite honestly. I am the one that sat there with our great team and uh, fought the fight for 11 weeks while she wasted taxpayer dollars. There is so much there. The fact, first of all, that they didn't do anything wrong is enough. But then you've got a judge who decided that we weren't going to have a jury. Um, he wanted to hear this himself. That plays right into it. You know, he wanted the control of the decision. And this shouldn't have even been in that division. This should have been in the commercial division. Um, the, you know, if they were even going to bring this case, which was ridiculous. They used a consumer fraud statute against a private company in the state of New York. That's how desperate we are. And that's because the rules are different, because you're not entitled to a jury, certain things like that. That was all done by design, Eric, all done intentionally. So they've known what they were doing. They investigated for years and years and years. But all of these cases, just like Georgia, just like everywhere else, we're seeing them brought in an election year to tie him up because he's winning. It is coming from the top. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm reminds me of Fannie Willis yesterday testifying or, or speaking on, on, you know, under oath. She was, she 